When writing bass parts, it's important to know what the guitars are doing. Now, this is going to be quite interactive where you're going to see me create guitar parts and bass parts in one video and seeing how things work together and how to piece things together. So the first riff that we're going to go over with is inspired by Dark Funeral. So guitar one is going to be playing four chords, E, C, G and E flat. And the second guitar is going to play the same chords but in minor triads. So we're going to show you that now. And here is the boring version of the bass where all I'm going to be doing is just follow the root notes. So how can we make the bass more interesting? So first of all, we can start with the first chord change, an E to a C. So you can start off with your root note and add like an ascending pattern. So when you get to C, you can land on the root note, but we've got more movement. So, so we're on C now, but we could use the natural minor or the harmonic minor. Now I don't want this bass riff to go too high, so let's keep with the natural minor, just keep it on the A and D strings. So you have the C chord now, and then we can move up to this E flat note there. And then that leads us nicely to the G note, the G chord there. And there we can use a kind of like almost a diminished kind of tritone movement. So we've got G here, we move up A minor third to the sixth fret on low E. And then just a beat before the E flat, we can play this E note here, giving a more kind of like harmonic minor kind of sound. just make the bass part sing a bit more but kind of like using the power chord shape on this E flat and then sharpening the fifth here so that whole bass line recorded with the guitars goes like this Now we've written a more interesting bass part as opposed to just following the root notes. Like we're still following the root notes, but we're adding some melodies and some movement in there so that the music is more exciting to listen to and the bass parts have more of a purpose in the song. Now these held out drawn minor chords are fantastic for coming up with interesting bass parts and there's always a moment and there is a necessity where bass guitars need to follow the rhythms and the root notes of what the guitars are doing. Such as this next riff. Here's the second riff, it's inspired by Norwegian black metal bands. A bit more groovy, a bit more punky. Let's hear how this one sounds. <laughs> So with riffs like these, you kind of want to keep it as close to the guitars as possible so all three instruments are in unison and can give massive attack. So with this groovy Norwegian style riff, um, what I played on the bass was exactly the root notes on the guitar. So it starts off on the E, you keep it open. Then you've got an F. Then you go back to the low E and then the accented notes are the G sharp here and the F there. The 
last parts, again, emphasizing the F, and then the final two notes, the B and the B flat. This is not a riff where you want to be too technical, you don't want to be like, you know, you don't want to make it too technical or too kind of difficult on top of the um, guitar parts, it needs to be kind of, you need to kind of take a step back and work with the guitars a lot more there. So the next type of riff is one of those cold melodic black metal riffs. So it starts off with an E power chord here. I'm going to sharpen the fifth to the sharp five here, the tenth fret on D. There's the first two chords. Then back to that E power chord. The next two chords, E minor diad here, seven on A and five on D. Use your little finger to play the seventh fret on D. And then finish on the D major diad here, fifth fret on A, fourth fret on D. And on the repeat, we go. This little run here following the B minor triad. Writing bass parts for a more epic section of a song like this purely goes down to taste. So I've come up with two things that work quite nicely. First of which is adding a little bit of a moving bass part, as in the guitar parts are going down whereas the bass is moving upwards. And that's played like this. Now with that bass line, I didn't want to take away from the guitar parts right at the beginning. The... But I wanted to emphasize that chord change there. So what I did, I just pedaled on the low E, just gave it some power on the low E. Then I'm going up the notes here. Third fret, fifth fret on the low E. And the first time I played it, I followed the root note here of that major chord. And then accented the major third there. But I just kept on the A string because I wanted the tonal consistency. And then going back to the root note. Second time round. I emphasize the major third. This F sharp note here, but lower down so that it gave that kind of rising melody in B minor. The... That bit there, it just made it pop through a bit more. I didn't want to go too high and then go down. I wanted to bring the bass parts down and finish with a rise, if that makes sense. So we build up the tension here with the lower note and then we relieve the tension and we create like a kind of feeling of motivation or uplift with the with a little melody there as opposed to going because it kind of dulls the mood going from a high to a low note and it's for me anyway I kind of like it when it's reversed like to finish on a high more like that as opposed to going because that sounds like something is finishing this feels like it's still going somewhere and that's why I chose to pick the lower notes. And if you really want to with a riff like this, you can go kind of crazy. And both times I copied what the guitar did with the B minor run there. So that's not something you really want to mess with and you kind of want a riff or an ending like that to really cut through and have all the instruments in unison. <laughs> 